Okay, I just wanted to provide a quick update video with the oil baffle stuff. Sun is setting over there. I just got back from test driving. And if you saw my previous video, you saw kind of the multi-platform or I guess multi-plate design of the uh, oil baffle that I created back in under here. So I've got about 40 or 60 miles on the truck and so far everything's been working absolutely phenomenal. So I think we finally resolved the baffle stuff. I learned a lot over the I guess four or five different revisions that I've attempted uh, when it comes to creating this this oil baffle in the back. So currently uh, with it with the aluminum plate baffle uh, that's working really well I have the PCV valve adjusted to where I'm getting about uh, well it's kind of hard to explain because the way the breather works is it lets fresh air come in so when this is pulling a vacuum around here it's not really a true vacuum unless I uh, seal off this hose you know what i mean then it will pull a vacuum and at the level i have it currently set if i do that i get about a three or four inch uh inches of vacuum inside the crankcase but that's pulling a perfect vacuum but when you have the fresh air breather what you have is you have air going through to to purge out the the vapors <clears throat> excuse me and the um the uh the blow by so it, it's kind of hard to get an exact reading now when i have the fresh air breather set up and the catch can and the pcv valve working on my my little suction gauge which is monitoring the crankcase vacuum in real time uh, it's running uh, you know at about three quarters of an inch so there's one inch two inch now if i if I block off or restrict the fresh air breather, then it will pull up around three or four inches. So I'm not totally sure uh, how it is that they measure crankcase vacuum. You know, if you Google it and you start seeing, oh, well, there, you know, you should have this many inches or that many inches. I'm not sure if they're talking about when the fresh air breather's involved or if those you know, drag race pages and, and racing pages are primarily discussing uh, full-blown dry sump systems. Uh, so I don't really have an answer on that. All I know is based on running the motor with the fresh air breather and using this little diagnostic port right here that runs back to that suction gauge you saw. And the suction gauge, as I mentioned, is out of uh, an airplane. Um, then while I'm driving in the in the the base adjustment for this valve I have constantly about half an inch or a quarter of an inch uh, of vacuum which is great that means I'm always keeping the crankcase under uh, vacuum or negative pressure pretty much throughout the entire RPM range. Unless I, you know, unless I'm flooring it and I suddenly let off the, the accelerator, then sometimes the, the, the vacuum shifts around and then it has to restabilize. But for 99% of the time cruising down the highway, it is pulling the blow by and any moisture in the crankcase out of the motor and it's going into the catch can. So with regard to how the baffle that I, I did, the aluminum plates is working, I, I can say about 20 miles, I will see maybe one milliliter of, of oil in the catch can. So I was super thrilled about that. Because, and, and even going up the hill to my house, which is a, a, a pretty radical hill that goes up a thousand feet elevation, I'm no longer having that weird problem uh, where the oil was pooling at the back of the valve cover and cylinder head and getting sucked up. Now, 
the oil might still be pooling back there, but because of the design of the baffle being forward of the very rear of the roof of the valve cover, I th and also having that little hole in the front of the baffle, and you'll have to go back and, and look at the previous video on my channel. I'll link it in the description to, uh, to fully understand what I'm saying here as far as the internals go. But I think that front little hole is what's really helping when I go, go up a hill or for that maybe perhaps downhill too. Now, everything I've explained was with just this external baffle, which is a throwback to, you know, last year. Uh, everything I'm speaking of is with this external baffle, which is a one inch silicone hose, um, with, with it being perfectly empty, except for the little funnel tip thing that I fabricated that kind of is right there. Now, what I did just today was I put in this material in here. And what this is, is this is, I believe this is 3M paint stripper on the bottom. And you, you can kind of see. And then someone on the channel at some point had mentioned, hey Ray, you ought to look into two-stroke air filter foam. And so I went on Amazon, sure enough, I found some, and I punched out these little round holes using a, a punch I had. And it works. Got a little bit of oil there, but it works pretty well, and it doesn't really inhibit the airflow. So what I did today was I, I took this off and I put this in kind of like that. And... When I drove 10 miles over to Whole Foods, there was absolutely no oil in the in the, the catch can, which was a first. I mean, there's just the very, very slightest residue. Now, on account of that, I turned up the vacuum level ever so slightly. So I went from having, with the breather open, you know, the fresh air breather, I went from about half an inch of vacuum to maybe five eighths or three quarters and on account of this having a little resistance so I was able to turn the vacuum up and because it was it seems to be doing a fantastic job of limiting the oil and I think what's happening what was happening was when I had a, a straight through passage there was some velocity of blow by gases that had oil in them which was racing through and getting caught in the catch can as it as it should do and by putting this in it slows the the uh, kind of the blow by with the oil mixed in down in this part and then the foam really slows it down and I think what's happening is it's allowing it to drip uh, back into some degree now there is a little since I turned the vacuum level up there is a little bit of oil residue but it's, it's very minor and I think it will be no problem for for driving, you know, several hundred miles, uh, if not a thousand miles at a clip without filling up the, the oil catch can. So I'm pretty, pretty excited about that. I wanted to just kind of share my experiences. And, and basically, I think we've basically put a nail in the coffin of the, the whole oil baffle stuff. Um, the other thing was a gentleman on the channel had asked about kind of how I fabricated this bracket. So I used some 316 stainless coupling bolts. Uh, these are M8 that I got off the McMaster car. And they just kind of attach to the, the studs on the brake booster and give you somewhere to run some, some bolt, some M8 bolts in. And these happen to be titanium ones I had laying around. I believe these came from Race Tie in the UK. Uh, and, and these are the ones that have the hex on the outside as well as the hex on the inside. And then what I did here was this is just some ABS uh, plastic. I, I can't quite tell if it's a half inch, but it looks like it's probably half an inch there, maybe three eighths. I don't recall where I got this from. Uh, it might have been McMaster car. I just had it uh, lying around the garage. And... What I do is I just, I made a cardboard template and then I just took a hacksaw 
uh, and some files and some drills and what have you, and I, I notched this out. And so basically, you can kind of see all it does is just sit there and give this a little shelf to sit on. And then I just use some Velcro, so it's, it's easy to pull this in and out and check it real fast. So for the person who was curious about how I made that, that, that kind of gives you a little bit of a rundown. So anyways, that's the update. At this point, it seems that the, the problem with the excessive amount of oil being drawn into the, the catch can has been resolved. I may do a little more fine tuning as far as vacuum levels and, and such, just you know, once I get driving the truck for 500 or 1,000 miles. But uh, overall, uh, things are running pretty well. Now, I, I will say I am still monitoring the, the oil consumption with the dipstick as a function of just running the engine. Uh, I have been running some uh, seafoam concentrated fuel injector cleaner through the motor. Uh, anytime I take out the spark plugs, I spray a little B12 chem tool in, directly into the cylinders just to kind of help free up the oil rings. I don't have a real good read on how much oil the truck is consuming, but I'm hoping that now that I'm able to run slightly higher vacuum levels in the crankcase, I'm, I'm hoping that that will kind of settle down the, the oil consumption on this particular motor. Now, even if it doesn't, you know, even if I have to dump in uh, a quart of oil, you know, every 800 or 1,000 miles, that's okay because I don't really, aside from driving back and forth uh, down south, I generally don't drive the truck all that much on the highway. Um, I am selling my house, as I mentioned, and I'm relocating about 500 miles away from where I currently live. So I'm using the truck to transport stuff uh, and, and I'll be towing a trailer and, and so forth. But once that's over, I'm working on a new project and I'll probably be, uh, you know, at my office most of the time. So the truck will just be for around town. So even if I have to put some oil in this particular motor, that's okay. As long as I can, you know, kind of uh, depend on the truck to, you know, not be sucking in five ounces of oil every time I drive 10 miles. And then as I've mentioned on the channel, I'm in the process of uh, designing a turbocharged uh, 3RZ motor for the truck. But that's a much longer term project, probably three to five years. Um, and uh, I have a lot of work to do with that. I do have the short block and the crank and things, and, and I'm slowly building up kind of the, the, thing, the direction I want to head with the 3RZ. But for now, the 22RE seems to be doing its thing. I believe we've finally got a baffle design that works. Everyone who's been following along, I appreciate all the input and the patience with, with kind of getting that. I know some of the people on the channel th thought maybe I had lost my mind. <laughs> there were a few times I thought I had lost my mind. And I'm just happy that we've kind of finally gotten to this point. And I, I'm very relieved to report that the, the motor is really running great and the truck has really good power. I'm getting 20 to 25 miles per gallon city and highway. And so uh, it's, it's just, uh, it's been a lot of work, but I feel like it's it's been worthwhile. So uh, if you have any questions, as always, feel free to use the comment section below. Uh, if you're enjoying the content on the 22RE and such, uh, definitely uh, consider subscribing and turn on notifications there. That'll, that'll uh, help alert when I put out videos. Uh, I try to get them out about once a week, maybe a little sooner, maybe a little uh, later. I will be uh, writing a video on the construction of the front push bar on the truck. This little guy here. Uh, just haven't had a chance to do that because I had some problems with my computer. But All right, well, that's a wrap for this one. Thanks again for watching. And like I say, if you have any questions on anything, uh, feel free to use the comment section below there. All right, thank you for watching.